Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Ryan Bergara. I'm Shane Madey. I'm Stephen Lim, and that over there is one of my best that. friends, <laughs> <laughs> really? Jason Wiley. It doesn't sound like it. I'll just call him Jace. That's right. That's right. You, you know that thing on your phone when like you can update your contact, and then it updates like other people. He recently did this, and it, it changed his name on my phone from Jason to Jace. Is that something you encourage, Jason? Uh, the nickname? Yeah. I I find that I like it when people call me Jace, but I actually debated doing this because I think that if I call like a business person, it might do that as well. I think that's okay though. Do we like that? I think people are yeah. overly um, <laughs> concerned about how people perceive like nicknames and stuff. I see, but yeah. I don't think... It- like when I call you long legs or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to update my contact info. Well, actually, and you, you can put a photo as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which is I cool. always like that when it gets an updated photo and it's like, this is what this person wants me to see them as. Right. Which is good because most of mine are from like 2015 at this point. Who yeah. came up with, who was the first person to call you Jace? Because I have to say, I've never heard Jason abbreviated to Jace. I feel like I have. You know, it's funny. I think one of our other good friends, Chris, might have been one of the first i don't know it's been chris kim get that when you were like chris kim when i was younger yeah watchers like chris kim a notoriously lazy guy (laughs) shout out chris kim he can't even say jason has to go jace (laughs) well you're actually a guy who loves nicknaming people that's not oh i guess that's true that's true i mean i called you me steve when we first met that's right by the way only I've, only people who don't respect me call me Steve. That's not true. <laughs> well, that is true. I mean, well, I mean, I, if it's just me, then yes, that is true. And secondly, secondly, you also, when we started the company, do you remember this? So Ryan had control over our website, our domain, you know, all of our email addresses. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I did. And so, you know, you can put like their name for like oh. Steven at blah, 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 dot com. Yeah, but you could also put an alias so that when people would type the alias, it will also go to that person. So I gave Shane and Steven. The I remember what you put for me. I put for Shane Big Head at Watcher Entertainment, <laughs> yeah, head, yeah. and then for Steven I put Kobe fan, and oh, I wow. think. which is which I'm a fan, but it's it's the farthest from the. You should put LeBron fan, Jeremy Lin fan. He's a brown boy. Well, Ryan, didn't you also did you coin Big Apple Steve? Because I, I did you're coin the Big first Apple person Steve. I think I heard yeah. say that. Yeah, and then I started saying that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I don't know if you. I I never asked. You I don't mind you like Big Apple that. Steve. I think okay. it's a fun alter ego. Yeah, but because of you, it blooded into because you know Jason as well. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and it blooded into then my friend group with Jason, and now everybody calls me Big Apple. Dude, I'm yeah. happy but to hear because it. of you. I'm happy. But to now hear there's it. like every geography. There's like you know Las Vegas Steve or like Sin City Steve. Sin City Sin Steve. Sin City nice. Steve. Yeah. I like that. I like that I'm basically like a virus on a floppy disk. <laughs> and you inserted me into Jason, which, you know, I could probably say that better. And then now he inserted me into everyone else. You know? Yeah. We uh, all need a little bit of Fergie. Wait, what is your nickname here? What is my, uh, I think people have called me the Burgoos. The Burgoos. Burgoos. My, my, yeah. uh, beer or my, uh, beer, like, Gara, he's, beer Gara is my alter ego when I'm drunk. I feel like he's quieter these days. Beer Gara so. has not made an appearance in quite a while. I've just kind of toned down the drinking in general. I'm just trying to take it better care of Well, you're of a father life. now. I'm a, no, I'm yes. not a father. The father to I, one puppy. Ryan I, had a child. I, yeah, he, he's covered in flirt. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I was on a, a video chat with Katie LeBlanc, the head of development over here at Watcher, and she just had a child and in the vid chat, she was like, you know, just talking about like the baby life and she was like well ryan you know you just got a puppy right and i was like well no and she was like don't worry i i can make that joke and i was like yes you can (laughs) but uh no i i have a dog well today we're talking about oh yeah this is a show where we i'm sorry we got (laughs) sidetracked let's go into the spiel for those of you who don't know this is a show where we talk about whatever's on our minds every week and this week we will dive into let's start with steven oh i get to go first okay yeah i'm not covering that (laughs) so my topic is nectar which is actually my friend Jason over there. It's his company's app. And by the way, this is not a paid promotion. Jason did not pay me to be on this. Although you can if you want. No, <laughs> it's not a paid promotion. Um, but this is the Valentine's Day episode. So I wanted to talk about love. Yes. Yeah. Nice. And, and Shane? Mugs. Okay. You just came up with that after you looked down at your hand. Yeah, you're like Dwight Schrute you, in the office the when he's like, dirty. what's your dentist's name? <laughs> Quintist. <laughs> uh, and then I will uh, we'll be talking about Charles Melton. Ooh, Whoa! Melty. 
Whoa. Uh, and, and, and he will be a gateway into a larger discussion. It's not going to be. I did not see this coming, but wow. I had a lot of I, awesome I, on Charles. One of my favorite topics to of my life. We had to talk about it because Jason and I yes. and Steven all had an experience, a lovely experience with him. But I will say that he's a lovely man. That's all you need to know. We'll talk about it later. It's the first time a topic is about an individual human being. That's true. And I'm sure he'll be thrilled about this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's assuming he knows who I am, which I don't think he does. Anyways. I think he does now. I think he'd be like, if he saw a picture of me, he'd be like, that looks like a memory that I have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if I saw a picture of him, well, we could talk about that later. <laughs> Before we jump but, in really quickly, can I just say something, which is I'm yeah. uh, very grateful to be here, but I don't know, Shane, if I've ever told you this, but back in the day when you guys were at BuzzFeed, people yeah. all the time would tell me that you were my doppelganger. I could see... Or I, that I was your doppelganger. Yeah, I could Which, see Which, if you look at the four of us oh and you would God. say, who looks the most similar, you would never think... Yeah. You and I. But but then I saw it too, but I don't want to say that and risk offending you. No, but, I, okay. I... You have similar uh, vibes, proportions... I mean, you're much taller than I am, I think, but I, I think feel like something about... How tall about, are you? You, I'm, you I'm, give tall vibes. I'm just under six, like five... That's tall. That's tall. You, know, you have similar facial fours. features. You really do look like white Jason. You look like... Yeah, like <laughs> white Jason. I tell, that's what I well, tell people all the time. People call me Asian Shane. <laughs> I think you're more... He's white Jason. <laughs> this is the episode of uh, The Office. Um, I can see that. Okay. Yeah. No one's ever this, said this anything feels to correct. you, though? No, they would, okay. You actually kind of <laughs> look like if somebody like punched me into Shane and we became one person. Oh, I like oh, that. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw someone the other day pause it and this is only I'm only saying this because it's sort of a nasty comment. Um <laughs> but you've regularly compared me to that dog in that cage. <laughs> so I feel justified in, in pointing this out. Someone pointed out that you look like an adult cabbage patch. Baby. I saw that. I saw that. I thought that was so fucking funny. <laughs> Oh no! Can we put a picture of that up? Oh, no. It's pretty amazing. I don't know where it was. You know the um, dog we're talking about, right? I guess by proxy. Did you find what you find? Here's the dog. <laughs> Is that the dog? <laughs> oh, no. it, kills, it kills me. Oh every no! Time I see it. It's is it the eyes? <laughs> it's my Slavic eyes. <laughs> it's it's the eyes. Is the expression? He's such a happy guy. <laughs> he is a happy guy. Okay, you know what? I mean, I I oh. yeah. Okay, quick. How much money do you think you're spending on subscriptions a month? Uh, I I don't know, man. Well, if you used Rocket Money, oh, what? Well, what happened? You, if if you used Rocket Money, you would know. That's what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah, right. Well, Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills. Damn. That's right. I can see all of my subscriptions in one place, and if I see something that I don't want, I can cancel it with a tap. I never Ooh. have to get on the phone with customer service. Why, they'll even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money and negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20% per goose. Oh my God, that's amazing, because I don't know how to use my phone. I know you don't, and you're also really bad at math. I know. It's okay. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the with, rest. With the camera? With the camera on your phone. Yeah, okay. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash watcher. Wait, wait, slow That's, down. Could you, could you say that again? I'm writing it down. Can you say it again? That's... Rocket Money, R O C K E T M O N E Y dot com. That's yeah. period. Yeah, C O M. Carry, uh, carry the one. Yep. Sl not math. Slash watcher. That's rocketmoney.com slash watcher. Okay. Say it back to me. Say it back to me. Rocketmoney.com slash watcher? You nailed it. Yeah. Anyways, let's start with a topic. You're actually better yet. Steven, why don't you tee us up about Jason and, and why he's on the pod? Yeah, sure. So my topic is about Jason's new app. If you guys don't know who Jason is, Jason is the CEO of Jubilee Media. Great content over there. Company that makes a bunch of uh, really enthralling com content that helps you grow in your empathy. 
is that is how I would describe it. It's, it almost sounds reductive to call it content, though, because didn't, didn't you make a documentary that got accepted into Sundance? It was uh, called Rebecca, Accepted. Yeah, it's did. called Accepted. Yeah. yeah. Watch Rising. It's, got, a, it's uh, Emmy nominated. nominated. We did get nominated for an Emmy. We lost. By the way, just want to shout you out because a lot of the success that Watchers had is because of Jason. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't, I actually mean that. You know, when I first started doing YouTube, I, ent- I entered the Jubilee Fellowship which was a program that he and uh, his two co-founders put together at that time when they were Jubilee Project, helped me get the confidence to want to do film and video entertainment. That was in 2013 yeah. when I first oh, met wow. you. Yeah, crazy. We've just known each other for so long. And I then bet. even when I started the company, I came to you with uh, like a lot of questions because you had started Jubilee and asked you, like, how did you do it? You know, how, how did you be a CEO? It's so hard. Like, I have a very vivid memory of being in the Jubilee office. And I remember Jason showing us on his whiteboard, like how he was mapping everything out. And uh, yeah, he was very gracious with his time in terms of just telling us how to get things going. I do remember that quite vividly. I hope that was helpful. It was very helpful. I'll set you guys back a year or two. (laughs) We followed the blueprint and we have some issues. (laughs) Uh, That's neither here nor there. But uh, the thing that I've seen you work on for the past year, yeah, uh, and it's very rare for you to companies to do things like this and be successful is you guys created an app a literal app a social media n- network of sorts almost yeah uh maybe i don't want to go that far but it's a it's a hopefully one day it will be. maybe one day yeah it's an app that lets you take a personality test and you, it, you find out how uh what your personality is in terms of like your love life in, in That's your, right. We call it kind of like a love personality test, almost like a Myers Briggs or a Enneagram for love. And then, yeah, you can get on and you can see how compatible you are with other people. And that's the most fascinating part because I took this test and I have a few friends on my list. And literally, uh, compatibility wise on this app, my wife is the lowest <laughs> on the list of compatibility. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, so I wanted to bring Jason in to, uh, <laughs> explain, to, the to algorithm. explain how does this work? Yeah, what is going on here? You had to grind an axe. But then also, I wanted, I actually wanted to see you guys take it too and see how we com- compatible we are. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that would be fun. In friendship. Uh, in in friendship. our friendship. Yeah. People always say me and Shane are the, are the least, have the least in common. That's not a secret. Nobody says that. Us. Who says that? Nobody says that. We've talked about what we have in common. We found it. We addressed it. <laughs> we found that one item. Yeah. <laughs> We've moved along. Um, but yeah, I think we should take the test and, and see how compatible we are too. Is there any plans, Jason, to put a feature in there where you could put the face of the person you're trying to see if you're compatible with with your face and see what your baby would look like? <laughs> we should add that for sure. Like a face melding. Or you could put a, f- a picture of the dog and see how similar you are. Yeah, I would love dog. to see what yeah. I look like melded with my dog. <laughs> well... <laughs> All right. Uh, to be clear, though, because I want to make sure to mention this is... Oh, um, I wasn't saying it like that, Shane. I, mean, I was just saying, oh, well, I guess there's only one way to get there. <laughs> so, That's the thumbnail, by the way. Yeah, the just me as a dog. <laughs> the app that we built with... Um, so we didn't build it just ourselves at Jubilee. We actually worked with a PhD kind of love... Relationship scientist. A love guru, if oh, that's you Guru, awesome. yeah. Uh, academic guru as well. So yeah. she had done all these studies and we found her, we're like, this, she's brilliant. How'd and you find her? Just scouring the internet because we knew that like we could come up with our own kind of philosophy as to what leads to compatibility. And yeah. that would have just been like Jason's idea. And yeah. we're like, no, we want this to actually be rooted in science and that's data. Awesome. So we surveyed over a million people and we gathered data and we actually found all these different characteristics that lead to compatibility. We had like a list of 20. And we found the top four. And these are the four that are part of Love Print. And so we found that, you know, there's a spectrum and you'll see the different four. So one is like communication. Are you like an active communicator or reflective communicator? There's, you know, intimacy, vulnerability, and partnership. And um, that if you have a low compatibility, it does not mean that you're supposed to break up. Hmm. So I just okay, want to be, I want to make that caveat. <laughs> it's just, hmm. I mean, me and my wife are. Steven's got to call I, a courier right now. Right. We're at, Don't bring the divorce, divorce papers. <laughs> Don't. We're at uh, 54% compatibility, which in, in my eyes seems hey, like a very. Hey, that's pretty good, man. 54%. The but it, but then the, point. the app says we're very compatible, even though that seems like. Wait, what? I'm confused. If you're, if you're above 50, we, we actually see okay. still us because still, the score goes out down. Oh, you are compatible. You can go all the way down to zero percent by four percent technicality technically hey, you man. and your wife do not hate each other <laughs> this seems like a pass fail situation you passed congratulations okay good 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 
And um, the, the other thing is we find oh, that. Oh, wait, no. Did it what? change? Oh, it's <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. So the <laughs> break. So the thing is, you guys have been adding more tests. We have been adding more tests. As like the app has grown. And so I took the the third test recently. Which one? Um, Boundaries or family? Family attachment. Yeah. And literally it. It took this from 64 to 54 to 49. Now we're 49%. Oh boy. Damn, dude. You better do some work. Get so that up into the 50s. You know, scientifically, if you're below 50, that means you have to. <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> you have to. Oh, your, oh, your love yeah. score right now is like a, a film that opened poorly on Rotten Tomatoes and it's just dropping <laughs> by the day. Well, here's the, every review. Maybe this is the good news is what we find is, especially in relationships, the longer that you date and the more conversations you have about these things the more your answers change and your compatibility goes up. Oh, you guys mm. will get there. Yeah. I'm actually scared. You're not married. You're not. I mean, you are married, are but married. you haven't had your wedding yet. So hopefully you can <laughs> get it up over the 50% but, uh, before line. Before July. You got some yeah. time. You got All some right. time. That does bring me up to a follow-up question. So what is like the ideal time to do this? Like, is this like nice for people to do on like a first date? Or is it like perhaps like there are like three dates in? Usually three dates is when you're like, am I serious here? Yeah. Um... I recommend it all the time. But yeah, first date is a fun time. The one reason I tell people to do it during first date time is because there's also a number associated, which is relationship readiness. Ooh. So you get a scale of one to 10, which is like 10 is like, I'm ready to get a ring on it. I want to lock it down. And some, someone might be a one and is like, I'm just having a good time. Yeah. Let's hook up. But if a 10 and a one meet, no matter how compatible you are on all these other attributes, it's not going to end up successful because there's like a difference in expectations. When you get a 10, is that what it says? Like put a ring on it and does the one actually say just DTF? <laughs> yeah. <kind of. laughs> just just uh, DTF. Not so many words. Yeah. yeah. Just um, in Typhoon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. I'm I'm excited to have uh, take the test with Mari and I. I will not be sharing those results publicly though. Uh, unless it's like 100%. Unless it's 100%. <laughs> actually no because 100% would be kind of gross. Too much. Yeah. You know. You want yeah you want to disagree. You want like a 80 yeah, I think yeah. that what's some room for being like... 80 is pretty tough, tough to get. I mean, I have like a <laughs> few friends and none of them are an 80 for me. Well, Who's Steven, that? as you look at your results with Tammy and you look into it, does it resonate where you're like, oh, this kind of makes sense? Or you're like, no, this this <laughs> well, is broken. It's interesting because... Like, oh, knowing Tammy, this all adds up. <laughs> yeah, he's looking at the score. I could see it. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it. Yeah. It's That's Tammy for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think philosophically, uh, Tammy and me, we do have different perspectives on relationships. But the funny thing, for example, one of the things is like, are you an I person or a we person? Yeah. Right. Mm. And it's funny because I test as a we person and Tammy tests as an I person. But in practice, actually, I end up being more of an I person and she ends up being more of a we person yeah. in like our behavior. Couldn't that also speak to both of you knowing this about yourself and knowing it about each other and trying to bridge that gap in the practice. That, that, mm, that, that probably is true. That's probably interesting. True. Like, yeah, what is that? Where does the theory of opposites attract fit? Well, here's the thing is we don't feel like if you have a low number or you differ on the results, that that does not mean that you can't be a good partner. Yeah. What we have found is that like, if you have a very different result than your partner, like Mel and I also had... Actually, it was on I and we. Very different results. Oh, interesting. But when it came up, it was like, yeah, we've fought about this for years in the past. Yeah. Where in the past, Mel would be invited to an event. She'd be like, yeah, I'm going. But I would be invited to an event. I'm like, yeah, Mel and I are going. And then she'd be like, I don't really want to (laughs) go. And I would just assume that she would. And it became this thing where I was like, okay, I'm understanding that you and I think about these things differently. So we came to that conclusion of how we just want to operate. I see. So it's rarely it's like illuminating something that you'd be like god smacked like so surprised by it's more giving you like lexicon and tools to understand why you show up a certain way and then for young people who are dating for the first time they're just starting to understand yeah what they're not thinking about it yeah exactly more than anything though it seems like it's just opens up a very fun and uh honest conversation if anything, which is which is what you want on a first date or when you're trying to get to know somebody. Yeah, that's right. I think one of the biggest things that we were trying to solve is especially like most of our audience is Gen Z. I'm sure you guys as well is yeah. um, a lot of young people are struggling a lot with loneliness. Oh, so, wow. Like dating is a huge problem. Sex is down. And one of the biggest reasons is because folks don't know what they're looking for. Yeah. And also they don't actually know often what who they are in a relationship or how they want to show up. 
So we're like, oh, maybe if there were tools and we were like, why is there not like a love personality test? Why aren't there things that help us to understand ourselves better? Like normal personality tests or like horoscope or all these other things. Uh, but that's rooted in um, data or science. Yeah. We're like what if we give that to folks, it might just at least help people be more constructive or more in- intentional about dating. That makes sense. Or even about the relationships because we can do this and we can all be friends and we can all look at our compatibilities as well. Yeah. I'd be very curious to do this with my group of guy friends. Yeah. Because I don't, I, you guys have been tight for a while too. I met Jason in 2017, 2018, I yeah. feel like. I think the first time uh, I hung out with you independent of Steven, I saw, uh, was it Beer Gara? I think that was That was first. Beer Gara. Well, also Jason <laughs> was very- you met first? No, and I then met Steven. The next day you met oh. Ryan. <laughs> Jason really started to hang out with me when I was in the midst of a breakup of a relationship over like six years. Oh, oh. I didn't know that and, actually. And so yeah. I was in a dark uh, place and Jason was actually one of the most helpful people to me during that breakup. Uh, you could have used this app during that. Well, I don't know about the app. I had the guy, so I didn't. And That's true. now, now, yeah. now, Jason could be the, the source. Yeah. He could be the app we to everybody. It, yeah. But yeah, he was very helpful to me during that time. Uh, I right. always think about that very fondly. Yeah, I think about you all the time, <laughs> Jason. Should we take the test? Well, how about this? Why don't we move on to some of the other topics, okay. and then we'll take the test at the end of the pod. Keep Ooh, you all waiting, okay. and then you guys could see the results about how compatible we all are as buds. Hey there, listeners. You Hi. Know we, uh, what were you talking to me? I'm talking to well. You're not really. You're listening to me now, though. So I yes, am. I am talking to you. Hi, Ryan. Uh, hi. You know, we sometimes get into some gross stuff on this podcast. Sorry, it's being human. <laughs> anyway, none of it is as gross as the bacteria that you could be sleeping on every single night, Shane. I huh? You're sleeping on some gross stuff over there. Uh, you don't know. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? I keep my toilet seat really clean, so, but I think most people's toilet seats are pretty (laughs) gross. I wipe mine down every, every time I use it. I actually believe that. Anyways, it can lead to acne, allergies, and stuffy noses. Yuck. Makes me ill just thinking about it. Well, Miracle Made is here to save the day or night, rather. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self cleaning, eco friendly bedding, such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. And not just clean, they keep you cool too. Because I, I know you run hot, big guy. Eating a lot of hot pockets <laughs> before bed. I eat them right before bed and then I go to sleep with a nice full belly. Using <laughs> using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long, so you get better sleep every night. Miracle sheets are also luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some Five star hotels. I won't name Whoa. names. Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher to try Miracle Made Sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo code watcher at checkout, you'll get three free towels. Wow. And save an extra 20%. Ryan, I think You're, you misspoke there. You said three free towels? No, I, Surely I did they not can misspeak. only give you I, two. I, I, I could see how you would, would suspect that, but in fact, that is the deal. You'll get three free towels. What? You could give one to yourself, one to Sarah, one to your precious little Obi. Oh, oh my God. Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a free refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher and use the code watcher to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40% off. I know, I know. It was just as jarring the second time, right? (laughs) Again, that's trymiracle.com slash watcher to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. Let's get into our topics. Let's start with, uh, I guess, mugs. Mugs. Well, um, I love them. (laughs) <laughs> i love a good mug uh you know when i was younger and look i like to bring my topics as um as little rabbit holes you know who knows where we'll go sure here. don't yeah. worry about no, it don't yeah. worry about it they seem simple but Branches. they unearth some fascinating <laughs> discussions um uh i used to when i was younger i was always surprised <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God, dude. I was always mystified that my parents wouldn't have, all they had, they had old mugs, you know? Yeah. Old mugs. All right. And I remember always being like, man, they have such old mugs. This is amazing oh. watching you. Every word feels like we're just, you know, yeah. you just don't know what the next. No, no, okay. I do know. Because they yeah. had old mugs. Okay. And <laughs> then eventually, you know, you move out, you buy a mug. Yeah. You buy a mug. Mm. Uh, maybe you meet someone, Ooh. you move in together, you go on a trip, you get a mug, <laughs> you get a mug. Uh, and then you hit a point where you're like, that's, we've got two. Too many we, got, we can't get any more mugs. Too many wow. mugs in this yeah. cabinet. And it occurred to me that that's what happens. <clears throat> Didn't we talk about this on a different episode? I think we might have. <laughs> <laughs> but now you... I'm really, I really want to hone in on it. <laughs> okay. You got also it. said like, yeah, my parents used to have a lot of old mugs and I opened them up and I was like, wow, they got a lot of old mugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look in the I... cabinet, you know? Yeah. But, but now I've, <laughs> yeah, now I'm, now I, <laughs> well, that's what occurred to me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys like buying mugs as souvenirs? What's your favorite mug? I have another mug story that occurred to me this very morning. So we wake up in the morning. I go grab two mugs. Yeah. And I fill them up with coffee. Sometimes Sarah does it, you know, we, we go back and forth, but I'll fill them up with coffee, put the cream in, bring her the mug, That's Yeah, a, you know? And I always get really in my head about it. Like we have got a lot of, as I said, a wide variety of mugs. We're yeah. at capacity. Um, How many mugs are we talking here? If you had to just, you know, off the top ooh, of your dome. I want to say 30 to 40. That's wow. a big cabinet. That's you got a lot of cabinet space. For just the two of you. I'm bringing a pick, yeah. a pick of my mug. Wait, is this the cabinet that had that roach inside of it? We can talk about that another day. No, but it wasn't that one. Because that was a hair. Lot. We have to talk about that at some point because that <laughs> shit was crazy. We can save that story for next week. Okay, next week. Remember, he needs to tell. The I will say our, our roach issue has been taken care of. They're not around anymore. Thank God. He whacked them. Whew. All of them. Anyway, um, so I always get in my head about picking the right mug. There's a lot of different styles, and yeah. I'm like, some mm -hmm. of the styles are nice, but they're smaller. We've got these nice tin tin mugs, but the, uh, sick, the, but they're um, kind of skinny. It's a good movie, and I'm like, I want to give her the right amount of coffee here. You know, I don't want to short her on on coffee. Yeah. So sometimes we, you know, someone in our building at some point, um, we were in the mail room. They just had a mug sitting out. It was a pinky in the brain mug, mm -hmm. and it said free. And we were like, let's get that. <laughs> so a lot of the times I'll give her the pinky in the brain mug because that's a good one. You weren't concerned about like the cleanliness of the mug? Like someone had done well, something horrible? Well, we washed it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean like it's still kind of... It's not like a couch. You cut your... It's a mug. Yeah. You're a weird guy. You're, 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 you don't you're, understand washing things. Yeah, you, but it's... You're still, afraid to wash it. What if ass. somebody put like a, 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 a pint of blood in there? Wow. Then I guess... You know, they would You're be just a drink. pretty sick and twisted person. You're drinking. Does your, your coffee could taste be worse, particularly It feels coppery. like it could be worse than the blood even. Yeah, that's, that's true. true. Some other blo bodily fluid yeah. in there. Ryan, I don't think you're ready to have a puppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta, what is that thing? You gotta express the anal glands or something? Yeah. Something like that. But I've also heard of people saving up, you know, other stuff for a rainy day. I don't know what? what's going on there. So today, um, I put the mugs down. Yeah. I told, I was like, and I gave you that mug. I've, you know, I've been doing this for years, giving her mugs and being in my head about it. But I'm like, she probably doesn't care. And I was like, oh, I, I'm giving you this mug. I was like, and for some reason today I vocalized, I was like, I hope that one's okay. And she was like, I'm actually going to switch it out. Wow. And I was like, oh, really? Shit. I was like, you know, I, I always get in my head about which mug I'm giving you. And she was like, if I'm being honest, I don't always like the mugs you're giving. <laughs> oh man so you were and right i was like are you are you sure sure and she or i was like i was kind of thrown i was yeah. like really uh -oh. and she was like yeah but it's not a big deal i was like so uh, talk me through this you know like if i gave you this little purple mug i might not give this to you because yeah. it's smaller and she was like no that's a nice cozy little mug yeah i was like okay See, communication you know it's important sounds like you guys should be on the nectar app bringing it back we're gonna nectar. add that to the app put some mug questions ideal on mug color yeah. size yeah. shape. let but me ask you this too just a side question about you handing the mug to sarah because mari and i also hand each other coffee yeah. Do you hand it to her with your fingers around the rim so that she could she could then hold the <laughs> handle and not burn her hand? I often cup? set it down on a coaster. But if you were to hand it to her, because some people just hand. I it would to them, probably. Well, in the microphone, please. Uh, me? 
Yeah. Uh, some people actually, oh shit! Some people actually just hand it to them using the no, handle, then you and have then, to grab yeah, then you that. grab it. You grab just the raw go, mug. Wow! Yeah, you, know? you, gotta, you have to show them how much you love them just by burning your <laughs> hand. Burning your hand. Your but if you yeah. hold it on the rim, you can kind of avoid the hot. Yeah, but you liquid. don't want to be holding it where they're going to be sipping. That's true. I mean, it's you can't win. Well, who cares? I use the handle. Well, because then because well, then they have to grab it. You see what I'm saying? But then you can hold hands just for, for a the listener. Yeah, when you yeah. hand someone a mug and you hand it to them with the handle, they have nowhere to grab. My you're... big old sausage fingers, she can't squeeze in and well, like. Even if you didn't have like it's sausage it's a fingers, tough hand. try the hand off right now. Yeah, I mean that's weird. And, now and if I'm that were full, no. But if that were full, it would have been all yeah. over my lap. Yeah. Nah, Jason would be covered in coffee over there. <laughs> he would have been. He would have been. Do you guys have mugs you love? Yeah, I do. Tell me about them. What about you, Jason? No. Well, we also have a drawer full of uh, whatever. We have a 20. Drawer not a drawer. Sorry. What is that? It's a cabinet. A cabinet. A cabinet. I yeah. was excited about the prospect <laughs> no, no. of a mug, a mug drawer. drawer but I, despite having 20, 20 or so mugs, I think I, I'm a person of habit. I use you the like same one, one mug. Yeah. We have one that uh, we have a, a newborn son. Yeah. Not newborn. He's like seven or eight. He's nine months now crazy yeah um but we have one that has his name on it it says augie that's amazing which is coincidentally the uh, mascot for the natural history museum oh, oh really? really yeah the dinosaurs is name that is short augie. for that's august really cool. august august stupalopolis the di- the dinosaur no, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're our, our child's name <laughs> our child's was name like, is fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> no his name is <laughs> his name is august oh august that's that's yeah. his great name oh, that's but, really cool. but so i use that mug yeah yeah i like that is it because it's a sentimental thing or is it a functional thing both both it's like a little taller a little bigger than this because i i similarly hate having to refill yeah. Like I just don't like I'm a tea guy so I just don't like to yeah. do it I got one of those ember mugs at one point oh, oh the ones that keep it hot I'm curious you yeah. didn't like it from my recollection it was weird it was kind of weird yeah I, and it burned out real quick you got but, that at hey if food. they've improved them send send one to me and I'll Jesus you know I'll give you a good plug but that send tracks with the, with the pencil thing you're an analog guy yeah I'm an analog guy well you got that didn't you get that for Sarah originally you got it back in the BuzzFeed days I remember yeah. that from a while ago it lasts a long time but the the battery burned out and it would do a thing because i do like a little half and half in my thing and there's something i don't know what it is but sometimes when you have a perpetual heat source under a thing it the half and half will form like a layer on top Ooh. like a like, yeah. oh wow it's like a little like and then you go to sip it, it and you get like a little you inhale like a little you swallow a little oh. sheet you're like <laughs> that's fucking disgusting <laughs> yeah man. it's not ideal they don't they don't hype that up in the commercials <laughs> no, they don't, no, they don't talk about the cream <laughs> sheets they, they were about to put one in the mail to go to you and then they heard you <laughs> yeah, say yeah. like nope this is no, not going gonna, to you anymore you know what they might have this could be you know what they need to hear because I remember at some point a long time ago Reese's peanut butter cups there was like a reddit thread where someone was like what's a thing that annoys you and someone oh, on reddit that. was like I hate on Reese's peanut butter cups, how when you take them out of the package, the side there's always a little bit that sticks to the side. Yeah, That's so true. There's someone who responded to it who was like, I work for Reese's. We're working on this right now. Wow. You know, and I- since then, maybe like a year or two after that, they fixed it. Whoa. I don't think they completely fixed it. I will say it's more prevalent on the bigger, normal sized cups. On the minis, it almost never happens. You know who I've never seen hold a mug is Stephen Lim. I... I feel like I only see you with Interesting. matcha. I'm not a mug guy, and I think it's because I find them impractical <gasps> and not functional. Jeez. So not functional? No. What's what? I was what? about to say that's pretty much like a. a you know what's you know what's a great, about mugs? A great invention. It's not a random par- parade here on a radio. No, go for it. Go for it. In, you... a ca- in a cabinet. Yeah, they take. How space. do you how do you put mugs in a cabinet? Yeah, I'm at the point where I've got you know a shelf full of mugs and then quite precariously though it hasn't been a problem i we've started some of the mugs now have to be stacked on stacked top, on top yeah. of the other ones so which dangerous. Is, that's a dangerous and that's not even getting have into you guys the, seen that thing with the hooks you can do the hooks that's, above? isn't that nice that's yeah. kind of like that, we do it, that. We is it a that. little cluttery though looking it's not bad you sort of have to you need enough space it's almost like cabinet. a showcase yeah. you have to pick like your six favorite mugs and those are the ones on the it's, hook. it's oh. like your underwear you know or you have that like the nice underwear that you yeah. want people yeah. to see and then you've got the what people want people to see who's how often people are looking at your underwear george you know for wife you want like the nice <laughs> underwear <laughs> you get the underwear you're like she's out of town my wife's <laughs> coming home I have to put on my good underwear <laughs> it's, I think it's the same with the mugs you don't want to hand someone the shitty mug that has the crack in it that's or fair it looks company janky. mugs company yeah. mugs also yeah. when you put mugs in a cabinet there's also that just that problem of the handle itself 
having to kind of like shove it in. Yeah. And sometimes you're going handle you to handle. You could sort of like nest them. You could kind of nest them. So this is a pretty rich and compelling topic. <laughs> sure. Really engaging conversation right now. I will say that I do have a lot of mugs. I used to collect them in terms of I would buy a mug from wherever I was at. But, yeah, uh, but then you hit your saturation point. I did hit you? my saturation point, but I also find myself, like Jason, gravitating towards this same mug. And it's... What's, what's mug? your mug? It's just a plain yellow mug, uh, and it's just wide. It's a very chody mug, which I really enjoy. <laughs> I don't love... I do generally love the classic mug dimension. I don't like that as much. I can't We've fit got, as much liquid I don't inside. Think it's, I don't think it's good. I, don't th- I think it's bad. <laughs> Ever drink water out of a mug? You can't oh, get enough it. water. You can't get enough water in a mug. Well, you no know one what? drinks water. I'm out refilling of a mug. my mug every five seconds. You know what I started doing at some point, um, like deep in the pandemic, when one of the great recreational things was simply just going on a walk around your neighborhood because it was like this was before it was even like generally, you know, it was when it would things were like crazy yep. and they were like, you know, don't go anywhere for those that period of time. Um, I got in the habit of going on walks, but I would bring a mug of tea with me. That's nice. And I would That's just walk nice. around the neighborhood with my <laughs> tea. And I was like, why don't more people do this? That's because it's kind of hard to walk and sip out of a mug. At well, the I'm, same not, time. I'm not. It wasn't a brisk pace. I was. It wow. was pretty. It was no pretty cap, nice. nothing. Yeah, even still, no it's cap. still hard to That's walk. It's like and sip. free balling out there. A little, a little it was, well, I was huh? also free balling. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> it was very much like you're that, going though. commando and, in your hands and, and in your pants. Teabagging in the. Teabagging uh, free ball. <laughs> <in the mud. laughs> That's crazy. Um, it was really fun. I, I haven't done it in a long time, but uh, I got to bring that back. <laughs> my, my last thought that I'll say about mugs is that I do love um, tossing some other stuff in there. I've never done soup in a mug, but I could. And uh, the other thing I like in a mug is a nice little ice cream. Interesting. I've never put ice cream Instead in a, a mug. Instead of a mug, makes sense. It's nice. You get, you know, you can hold it with one hand, give it a little scoop. It's like, especially if you're just, because I'm going to eat a whole bowl of ice cream? No. I mean, yeah. I'm going to have two little scoops. <laughs> we have little bowls. Mari likes little bowls. Mari likes little she bowls. Likes little, she that, likes, Mel likes it, little does, bowls too. And is little this an app? condiment. Little bowls? Condiment. Uh, saucers? saucers? Yeah. I have a friend who yeah. always steals those from restaurants. Yeah. The little tin. Well, those I are nice for when you have sushi them. and soy yeah. sauce. Wait, can I say something about that? Yeah. Stealing things from restaurants? Hey, look. Oh, my you God. Do I just saw somebody talk about this online. They're like, oh, I steal like a spoon. No, I want to clarify, fork. though. My friend who does this largely steals them from like major chains. It's like Outback Steakhouse. Okay. House. So that's okay. Then. That's a little right. more acceptable. That's, that's totally but I, I saw somebody that was like, oh yeah, I took like a dim sum uh Don't container. do that. I was like, How what are you doing? Do Why are you bragging about this? Don't be stealing. Restaurants already have it hard as it is. Sorry, but no right. one's ever stolen. And now I feel shitty, but no one's ever taken anything from a restaurant or a bar. I'm trying to think. I've um, taken a mug from a bar. I, I realize this. I did take a Guinness glass from a bar once. Okay, yeah. yeah. We were at a bar once and Mel and I were looking at the... um the little straw. It was like a cool metal straw. Nice. And Mel was like, oh, these are so cool. I was like, yeah, they're really cool. She goes, should we get some like these? I was like, yeah, or should we just take one? Or we could just get some now. So she goes, yeah, you you should take it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to take it. (laughs) Shout out Mel. Um, (laughs) So I I thought very slyly, just like palmed in my hand, (laughs) literally the bartender comes over and goes, "Um, can you please return that straw? Oh, (laughs) Oh, no. And I go, and I literally said, what straw? Yeah. Turn B red. Yeah. What straw? Uh, you know, thirty dollars tip <laughs> ran out of there. I'm just like, dude, what are we doing? That's like, yeah, the no, one I, and only time. Of course, I'm caught because it's like probably so. I obvious. can't think of one thing to say <laughs> more so than what straw <laughs> to make you look more guilty. I, yeah, I would have just fully gone. You got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would probably have been better. It would have been more funny. I was you just like, fess up yeah. Was you should put that in face. your app. How do you feel about theft, thievery? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I do think a lot of people feel very comfortable with that. Even like I've Ryan, heard friends stole, talk about. Right? Like, no, I was saying on one of these podcasts that I had never stole, and oh, I realized. Did you think about it once or something? I no, I th- I I completely forgot about this one night. I was in Long Beach, and we were on Pike, I think. And was they that were, a drug? No, no, no. It was that's the name of a street. Okay. Uh, I think. <laughs> Anyways, we were there and they had these really cool copper mugs for uh oh, for what's it, it called? Uh, um, a mule Moscow, Moscow, Moscow mule. mules. It's so and cold, I'm, it's so good. And it actually happened by accident because I was just like holding it and I walked out and I just walked out and I was like, What the hmm, this mug is pretty cool. And then my friends were like, Well, we're gonna have to go to another bar. You can't just walk into another bar with this mug. <laughs> And so what I did was I just stashed it in a bush 
<laughs> and I drove back, back the later? next day, back for and, it. I, and it was it was there in the. I still wow. have it. You're like, well, it's still here, I guess. That's a two day crime. God intended me it to was, steal it. It was. I mean, you could say it was even more premeditated. At Is that, that now your favorite mug? Uh no, I barely use it because it's very faded. I put it in the dishwasher, which you're not supposed to do. Uh, oh. And I did that like five times. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not good. One other question regarding this topic: Is it okay to take a pen when they when you sign the check? At a oh, nice restaurant, mm. and they've got a branded pen with the restaurant name on it. I You're just they, a little clever. I think they intend for you to take those, though. I yeah. feel like they do. No, if it, no you, you should be yeah. stealing pens. Branded. branded. No. branded. They want That's you the to thing. take it. That, no. If it's, if it's Hotels, not branded, they want you to take. I'm those. not taking it because matchbooks, they want to get their matchbooks right. for sure. I love I'll take matchbooks. like eight matchbooks. No, <laughs> matchbooks are different. You know than what? You just ask the people. No, never. Well, there you go. Yeah, There's that's, your answer. And that's, that's nasty. The answer, There's though, your answer. You yeah. shouldn't be taking it. No, no, no. You can never ask them. They, if you ask they're them, busy. hey, could I take these match this matchbook? They're gonna be like, yeah, of course. We have them in a bowl. So take the pen for a reason. The pens aren't in a bowl for but you then, to take. But then you know, I'm around town. I'm writing things. People are going, what, what's, what's uh, the? You got a problem. The, this guy's got a pen. What's problem. the word on that pen there? <laughs> we're gonna, it's we're a wonderful restaurant. We're gonna have to cut you off. You know. How many, yeah. how many, your drawers, it must be overflowing I've with pens. I've got a lot of pens. I'm going to open a door and one of your, and oh, Matt's looking something up. Oh, no, I'm just, i just looking around on the internet and it seems like most people think branded trinkets are meant to be taken. Wow. What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. With, the, with the restaurant on it. That yeah. is true. I disagree. I do that. I'm going to open a door in, in your house and it's just going to all spill pens out. Pens are just going to spill out. <laughs> Look at, um, <laughs> uh, this is one of my favorite, this was clearly, I mean, this hotels, hotel pens fully fair game that's fine yeah but uh in this room, is one of my, my yeah. favorite i think i still have this do you remember these yeah i stole this from the watergate i hotel. stole this from the watergate oh, hotel yeah. yeah and that's all their clever. key cards at the watergate they also say no need to break in <laughs> that's pretty good leaning into it it's pretty fun you're leaning into it <laughs> that's, that's a good. fun time that's good um okay so it's okay to steal pens as long as they're branded because it's not even theft uh, i want gonna, you I'm to not do co- it i'm not co-signing you're participating that participating in the marketing yeah i'm still a no on that I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask branded? ask if you want it. Also, I feel, think that's a good way look, to go. Feel how yeah. heavy it is. If it's heavy and you're like, ooh, the, the thing oh, is, maybe like, then don't take it. You guys may not realize how expensive like utensils and things yeah, they at, buy them in bulk. at restaurants can be. <laughs> they you buy them in you bulk. have experience in this. I I was recently in uh, Korea and don't want to spoil anything, but. Uh, some of the spoons were like um, incredible spoons, but then we went to go look up how much they cost, and it was like an eighty dollars spoon. I'm not taking the spoon, an eighty dollars spoon. Wow. And again, as yeah. I said, I think if you're buying custom pens that are branded, that's I mean, that's the thing. If I have a nice pen, but I'm like, you know, they that they give me to sign the check with, but I'm like, this is not branded. This is just a really nice, you know, uh, Univision Elite or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to take that. Right. Well, what, because they're not, we should we have, have John Yao. Well, you're, you're taking it from the server as well. We should have John yeah. Yao come in and ask him this question. That's true. That's a good idea. We should we should bring John Yao on the podcast. What's, what's I would love to catch up with him. I what's the it's harm? Been a while though, and just saying <laughs> I hey, love that guy. He's not busy at all. <laughs> I don't get what he's the not, harm he have is. The though, restaurant just, in just LA. Ask, like why can't you just ask? You know what? what? I'll do it next time. Just ask. Could I next take time? This? I'm at a place that has a branded pen. I'm gonna ask him. Can you can you record yourself doing that as well? Yeah. Just ask. Hey, could I take this? And no, like coaching them before you start recording. No, 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 no. How about if you take an item, you pay for it? Well, well look, here's the other thing. How about that? I'm tipping, you know? No, but the tip is not going to the it's server. It's not going to the restaurant. I, I, no, I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm a nice tipper, you know? Yeah. I believe I that. I tip, okay? No, everyone says you, you have a nice tip. <laughs> <laughs> Word on the street. Word on the street is you've got a nice tip. You got a nice tip game, dude. I've worked a, <laughs> I'm just saying I've worked a lot of service jobs. I've never waited, but. You know, I've, you know, I've been behind the counter shoveling, shoveling food and getting people mad at me. So I, I respect people who do this and I wouldn't take pens if I thought that it <laughs> oh, this just impacted did. them negatively. Just ask if you could take the pen. I don't <laughs> well, this, is, uh, this is what I'm going to say to them when I ask them. I'm going to say all that. The shoveling. No, no, well. yeah. no, understand. I'm a nice tipper. Dude, dude, what the fuck? Let me show you my tip real quick. Dude, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Just be like, hey, can I take this? I'm sure they'll be like, I don't give a shit. Like, that's... Oh, you're sure of it? Then it's fine. Hey, maybe they're not. <laughs> no, I don't even maybe have they're ask. not. There's nothing wrong with asking. <laughs> well, we'll get John Yao on the podcast, and I'm excited to dig John Yao, by the way. Everybody says, I will take his gospel, uh, but For the folks listening, if you don't know, John Yao has come on top by beatdown two times now. He's a Michelin star chef. And Him and I really get into well, it. Plug his restaurant. His, pl- his restaurant's Kato. It's great. 
They just opened a new space. Do they really? Yeah, they're they're way bigger now. Yeah. Wow, lots of seating. Uh, I don't want you. Also, don't tell him why we. Oh, just tell sure. him we have some questions. Don't send him this clip. I would love to hear him say what's the weirdest thing someone has stolen from his restaurant. Oh yeah, I bet you people have stolen some crazy shit. Which, by the way, congrats, John Yao, because he was named LA Times number one restaurant in all of LA. Yeah, it's Recently? great. Last year. This year? This last year, oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Right. Number one. It was great. Above Providence, you know, above all the stuff out there. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy that- Wonderful guy. He's I gotta to go back there. He's a good guy. Uh, let's move on then. Uh, moving on to uh, <laughs> Charles Melton. <laughs> Melty poo. It's so funny <laughs> that- well, I, I'm curious why you want to talk about Charles Melton. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> I was not aware of him until I saw May, December. Uh, I I was vaguely aware of him. He I, was on Riverdale, 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 yes. but he was also Fault in Our Stars. Fault in Our Stars. Yeah. So I oh. knew he was just like a hot guy. You, you know, know what else he was in? Ariana Grande's music video, "Break Up with Your Boyfriend," oh, and shit. he's the guy. Yes, that is like the the in hot the bar, guy right? in that music video. Anyways, he's he, a hot guy. When you think of like a very attractive human, like you know, like your Brad Pitts, you're like Margot Robbie's of the world. I had never seen somebody who had that kind of moniker on them. You know, mm. like, like ha Shane, you told me one time you saw Jennifer Lopez and she took your breath away. She was breathtaking. Uh, and Mari told me one time she saw Zoe Saldana at the supermarket and she was like, wow, that is a beautiful human. Mm. Uh, I had never seen one of these like bona fide beautiful humans like like pe that people you look like, at me every day, Ryan. What are you <laughs> that, no, that about? people talk about the people that people like. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's you, a hot person. Like you, Charles Melton was in roles where you get. Cast I'm right here, Ryan. As the hot, <laughs> you just look to your right. I'm sorry, Stephen. You're no Melty. <laughs> All right, fair. Anyways, do people call him Melty? I do. Okay, uh, he doesn't poo. know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, w Jason, myself, and Stephen, we were in this. Uh, celebrity asian bat it was it was an asian celebrity all-star game right yeah it's simu's asian celebrity game in toronto charity, anyways charity basketball game yeah. and um melton was on the roster and so i was like oh my god i'm gonna get to see this guy in person and i'm not gonna lie this guy is one of the most striking humans i have ever seen in my entire life mm. and i was just beautiful and i just couldn't stop looking at him but also <laughs> like talking about it every time he would leave the room i would like pull someone aside and be like the best looking guy you've ever seen, right? Like, and it's it's unbelievable. All the, all the dudes were talking about more oh. than the girls, right? Because I think oh. the girls know, but they know have enough sense not to talk about. All the guys are just like gobsmacked. Like this no, guy is I, so he, sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? I remember there was one point of the uh, the tournament before the game. They had hired like professional like massage artists to kind of like stretch you out and stuff before the game. And on the table next to me was Charles Milton. Yeah. And I was just like, this is fucking, I'm just getting a massage next to Charles Melton. This <laughs> I mean, is insane. Did, my, you, did you make small talk? No, dude. I, I, was, too, I was too scared to talk to him. Hmm. I uh, was like, he can't talk to a normal human like me. He, well, but when was this? Was this? This was a couple years this ago. Couple so this was like two years, years ago. Was this was years? still deep in Riverdale? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. When was did that end? A year they, or two ago? Last year, yeah. Or two years ago. We also went to a bar later that night. And he's like the nicest guy. Oh, he's, he's like the so nicest friendly, man. Yeah. like loves football, like from Kansas. Just good, good, good guy. Yeah. Like I like how you added from no, Kansas well, because, you know. because Jason's from Kansas. I'm from Kansas, go Chiefs. I made him laugh once <laughs> and I really treasured that moment. It was just like a major year. And he was like, oh, that's cool, man. And I was like, yeah, it is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, but we went to a bar later that night and this is how I knew this guy is just he's just on a different level than everybody else in terms of just like looking at his face. We went to a bar. He went into the bar with a just a, a, like a like a workout tank top on that was just like you know like the like the ones that Vin Diesel wears in the Fast and the Furious, except it's a black. It was a black tank top. He walked into a, a like a nightclub bar with just that and just like a pair of jeans, and they were like, "All right, come on in." <laughs> if I tried to do that. They would arrest me <laughs> on the spot. Which There's like a try. dress code, you know, when you have to get into these places, like no hats or whatever. But even if that like security guard didn't know who he was, I think he would have just looked at him and been like, yeah. yeah, you're coming in. You're good. And when we walked through the bar, because we all walked in as a group, just the amount of people that were just turning their heads to look at this guy. I was like, this is just unbelievable. I've well, never I felt seen anything like it. We were on the bus and we were getting off to, and he was like, I'm not going to go in, I don't think. I was like, no, it's going to be fun. Come on, just come through. Come to just like, let's grab a drink. It's going to be chill. It's going to be super chill. Yeah. Of course, like we like cajole him to go in. And as soon as he gets in, 
everyone starts looking at him. Everyone's like crowding towards him. Yeah, it was crazy. You know, I got all the space and he's like crowded. He's like, oh, this is not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, sorry. <laughs> it was, uh, but he's just the nicest guy. And it just kind of just got me onto the topic of just like these humans that walk around that are just like, they're almost like aliens. They're so good looking. Well, my, my wife compares his facial configuration in his body to like a Greek god. Mm. Like that's that's like the comparison she'll it's, it's like I guess closest thing to like a Greek Maybe I haven't dog. seen him in enough. I saw him in May, December and was like, oh, okay. He, he gained like 30 or 40 pounds for that role. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's an attractive guy. You gotta see the also like this, like if you see him slightly tilted, like slightly angled, you can see the well, you Just the really... details of his bone structure. <laughs> there you go. It yeah, dude. It's crazy. Sure, yeah. It yeah, is, yeah. yeah. It's one of those things where you, you have that. to acknowledge it. Otherwise, you're just like, you're just going to be thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, you just like, have to say it out loud. Because like, like I, you know. I said this to my wife and she was like, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm looking at a picture of him. Yeah, you kind of your reaction. Yeah. And then we went to the Unforgettable Gala, uh, which is like a gala that celebrates Asians and media. Was and, he there? And he was there in his full red carpet look. And Mari turned to me and she was like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Uh, that, that, <laughs> is, that is unbelievable. <laughs> and I was like, right? He's just breathing the same air as us right now. Isn't that crazy? Uh, and I just, I, I thought I was the weirdo for having this, like, almost obsession with having to talk about it. And then, like, I found at that tournament, no, it's every guy was just like, dude. It's universal. How yeah. about that Melton guy? That was crazy, right? Like, it, it, it's amazing. So much so that we had to work him into our, you know, we were like celebrating Steven. That's <laughs> <laughs> getting to yeah, give him right. this amazing award which you know congratulations yeah, congratulations Steven. Steven. he won the digital influencer of the award uh, award year at uh, uh best speech also yeah, he had um, a great speech Stephen. but as we were like gassing up Stephen, we were also gassing up melty poo you know um in that, <laughs> in that charity game i guarded him yeah oh dude and he's he is he, he is like he is like a rock sculpture too. You you get you touch him and you just bounce off. I'm dead serious. So long. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you guys might you know like meet him or work with him. Again. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we know him. We're, we're we know, we know him. We, <laughs> like, I've uh, met Mel Melton twice before. I know Jason actually knows him pretty well. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's super you know, chill. He's chill. he's in the community. He's yeah, like yeah. a bro too. He, so he's, he's like, gonna think I'm a total weirdo. <laughs> Fine. Yeah, uh, after this, next time we see him, he's gonna be no, super weird. Did you guys There's... talk about me for upwards of twenty minutes on your <laughs> podcast? He's welcome to you know. Join oh, the that, podcast, would, that would be we so. Should, we should fun have, him have him on. Hey, look, man. Sometimes you just gotta acknowledge another human is incredibly attractive, and it's just like it's unbelievable to see it in person. That's all I thought love. it was very uh, endearing that he uh, said that Riverdale was sort of like his. Uh, Jul didn't he say it was like his Juilliard? Yeah, where he like learned. Yeah, to, yeah. Well, How he's fun. incredible in May December. Yeah, he's great. It's great. It's a great performance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's also, yeah. In the speech, I forget what we said about him, but we had a whole spiel because we were saying Stephen, like we were talking to a room full of Hollywood folk, <laughs> and so we had to like give Stephen comps so that they could you know figure right. out who Stephen was like in the Hollywood world. We were like, like you know, it? like. Some call him the Keanu Reeves of the internet because he's like one of the nicest guys on the internet. Or like example. the Ali Wong because he's a multi-hyphenate. Or the Dame <laughs> Judy Dench of the food world. Something like, well, then, then Jay <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, i take that. <laughs> Jason said, <laughs> or like Charles Melton and I interrupt him and I just say, because soft lips. <laughs> that's which good. got that's good patter <laughs> which got, it got a laugh it right? got a yeah. laugh from different sections of the room but other sections weren't really like they were weirded out by that's pretty funny <laughs> i think it's like getting dropped into this conversation where we're just yeah. like dude he's so hot what's going on that's and like, funny oh, is this that's, that's a good bit you they, know they, they i respect his, good patter they cut to his reaction he didn't look too pleased by it no <laughs> <laughs> It might be online. I, did they cut to his reaction on they, the? They uh, did cut to his laughs. reaction, and I was oh, like, I, I can't notice. tell if he's unamused by this. No, he's doing like his like award awards kind of circuit. I feel like he has to be elevated right Simo now. Simo even had a, a a Charles Melton joke, just because it's, it's just like you have to acknowledge you it. Gotta it's insane. Acknowledge it, yeah. Uh, I actually ran into the director of Shang Chi later that night, Dustin. Yeah, and he was yeah, like, no, Dustin, "Yeah, you." Uh, Funny stuff on stage, and, and like the rest of my night, I I spent analyzing. What did he, was he like being sarcastic, or was he just like, dude, this might nah. lead to another role in Marvel? <laughs> yeah, another camera. I was just Shang, like Shang Chi too. He like, might have said funny stuff on stage, but he might. What he actually was saying was you're a real creep, huh? You're a real creepy guy. <laughs> nah, Destin's no, one of the most genuine girl. people on, yeah, on earth. Yeah, uh, he's that, amazing. I, I've that's haunted me. And and then you, I doubled you, down by talking about it. 
<laughs> did, you, did you talk about Ant Man with them? No, I did not. Oh, uh, you should have mentioned. Yeah, I did not. So I hey, we got something in common. If you want. Oh, I want to see. Oh, it. dude, it's it's it doesn't look like he's happy. <laughs> oh, I really no, want to see it. I, yeah. Jason, have you seen this reaction? Uh, the video. Oh I boy, did see it. I did see it. Steven's Hollywood comp is Charles Melton because soft lips. <laughs> 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 that was great delivery from from you there. <laughs> Soft lips. Wait, this, that's I did, very I funny. I did not plug his reaction because I, I probably dude, in the he moment. He looks like he's laughing. No, he dude, is laughing. He looks he's like, like a... lips. <laughs> he's turning away he's and laughing. laughing. He's, yeah. he's shy. In he's, that, he's, he's I don't know. It's one of those. I think it's one of those shy things. That's no, what you call a fifty-fifty yeah. ball. You're not really sure where it's gonna no. land. By the way, Ryan and I. Not rehearsed, but we had like three or four calls leading up to this. And I know it may not show in yeah. that presentation, but we put a lot of effort into that. Well, we that wanted great. That's, that's, okay, I just I've to seen know. worse. I mean, there's, <laughs> I've, 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 I've <laughs> seen worse. <laughs> well, there's some pretty recent examples of bad hosting, but uh, well, I didn't show the rest of the clip. After that, I did say Shane wrote that. <laughs> 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 um no I, I you guys are very natural up there that's hard to do like even on like the oscars it's it's crazy you get like some of the best actors in the business who are up there to deliver these things and you're like you can't do a, you can't do that a little better dude i gotta <laughs> tell you and you and i have at this point a fair amount of stage experience doing yeah. live events and things like you got, that did you get nervous dude, before this one uh, this, this was the first time in a while where i was like yeah. dude i am i am different. nervous right now like i was like whoa this feels like i'm walking into an audition because that's another thing i hate auditions they make me so fucking nervous every time even thinking about them they just... no that. steven did, did have a great speech though oh thank you but uh my speech actually was inspired by shane so i mean i told oh, you this you were talking about, yeah how like uh, when we were at shane's wedding he was telling me that like you know imagine you're a time traveler enjoying it in your from the future and that was the quote i used in my speech for the acceptance that i wanted to experience that night like i was a time traveler so thanks for that you know? but you also hey, went then? like yeah. off the cuff it felt like about like this amazing passionate speech i encourage all of you guys to listen and watch watch it uh on youtube i think it's on youtube it's, it's, on, it's YouTube, on youtube yeah, yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. I blacked out for sure. I mean, it, that crowd, <laughs> that crowd is like yeah. you mean, all like, of my while, idols. While you were giving it, you were like, is the memory like, or do you mean you got so drunk later in the night that? Oh no, no, I didn't both. get so drunk. It <laughs> okay. was more like this was an incredible experience yeah. talking to people I've watched my entire life and looked up to and wanted to to imitate in every way. It was crazy. Yeah. Like Steven Yoon was like sitting right there in front of us. Steven Yun. Yun. Was it Yun? Oh it's, wow. Yeah. yeah they actually corrected it in the, uh, yeah. in the a, show. Steven Yun. There's a thing where Conan mispronounced his name for like 10 yeah. years or something and he eventually like corrected why. him. But they're like close friends. I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Like, actually, I've known you for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually really special to stand. I don't know, Ryan, if you feel this way. We got to watch Steven give the speech to all these people. Off the side, yeah. And like we just got to live vicariously through that. And that was really special too. It was also nerve wracking too because backstage they're like, all right, you give your little presentation, then you yeah. fuck off. You go over here, stand on this thing that says number two. <laughs> Dude, I was going to talk to you about this later. Yeah, and but he goes, they're like, make sure you go to the star that says two and then go to the circle that says A. Yeah. And then we were both and like, <laughs> what? And I was like, wait. It's a complicated and I was like, you system. got it? He goes, yeah. And I was like, he doesn't, we do not do that. This. Dude, you actually did a good job. Okay. You actually go straight to your mark, whereas I do this thing where I'm kind of like John Travolta in Pulp Fiction, where yeah. I'm just kind of like, where the fuck am I going? It wasn't here? clear and it was so dark, and you're like, shit, what is what? I can't see anything. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it's a, it was a nerve wracking experience, yeah. but it was fun. Once we got on stage, it was fine. Was but so the fun. the waiting in the little wing area to go present. And I knew I was going to be staring right. at like at Charles Melton at like Asian Hollywood royalty. Well, Melton was just coming off stage too. Exactly. Melton and Seymour were coming off stage together, and they were laughing, chatting. And we we're like about to go on, or like, oh shit. That okay. is the one thing, though, and this is the last thing we'll say about this because we do have to move on to the Nectar Quiz. But he wasn't out there when we said it. Oh, so then you were you were like, nah, it's fine. No, he wasn't out there. So wait, what? No, because he was backstage. He was coming on next or after. So he wasn't in his seat when they said it. So I wasn't sure about that or whether they had seated him somewhere else and then they moved them back. No, so I okay. think they took a reaction from something else and oh, put think? it there. No. I don't think so. No, I'm pretty positive because we were bummed out backstage because right. we knew he wasn't going to be out there. Yes. And then when I saw that, I was like, wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. They must have just taken that. So for all we know, he was laughing hysterically. Or he just never heard it. 
Oh yeah. Or he was pissed. Should we just? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, just, I can find out. Actually, we I would just love... call him right now and just do it again. No one has. His, who has you have his number. <laughs> yeah, we could. No, call. but we should just ask. Wait, you have his number? Yeah, but like Melty, we're gonna do this bit for you real quick, and then you give your whole speech. No, again. dude, no. I hope he never sees this podcast. I'm, I'm gonna bank on the fact that he's not gonna watch Pod Watcher. <laughs> so you never know. I don't know. The fans are rabid. I'm sure that you guys. Can and if you want to come on, Charles, let me know. I think I've got hit me up. Sure. Uh, we'll have you on. I just want to close it out with, look, I wasn't trying to be creepy. I was just trying to acknowledge that you're a very handsome man. <laughs> and so, you know, if I saw Brad Pitt, I would be saying the same thing. I'd be like, look at this fucking guy. He's a, he's a, a an Adonis just walking among us. And How about that? Like less than what? A hundred people that are like that, really? In the world? Yeah. Famous? There's probably a lot more who are just living their lives. That's you know? true. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's enough about uh, Charles Melton, unfortunately. But we do have to move on to the Nectar Quiz to see what our results are, to see how compatible we all are as pals. Let's, Let's do it. Do as buds. It. As couch buddies. Uh, if you go to, everyone's got Apple, iOS. I do. I, do. I have it just all. Look up in app Nectar. I'm sorry to all Android folks. Uh, a lot of people are very upset at us for not having Android oh, ready nice. yet. Vinny's okay. But you should look up Nectar and it should show up towards the top. It says Nectar Love and Compatibility. It's like an orange logo. I believe everyone's taken it already. Uh, we have. Oh, you have. Yeah, oh, we've all. Oh, sick. Oh, we've taken it. Okay, so I just need to add you guys. How do I? Wait, do but I I took the one that happens when you first do it. Yeah, there wasn't that's, like that's all you need. You can do the the other two are really short. Each one will take like three minutes if you want to do that. Do you well. want? Should I do those or no? They take like three minutes. I would do it. It might yeah. be worth doing. It yeah, worth it. it changes the calculus of your compatibility significantly. Yeah. So love print is like the main one that kind of goes over the four different categories I had mentioned. We have, you know, um, communication, partnership, intimacy, vulnerability. Like a good example for intimacy is like, are you physical? Or are you more emotional? Of course, we're both, but you gotta you gotta figure out between those two. Vulnerability is like you're either open or you're guarded. But we've also added two additional assessments, and there are more coming. The two additional that we have right now are boundaries. So, are you more restrictive or are you more permissive? So what a lot of young people are finding these days is like with dating is like, where's the line? Like we all know what cheating cheating is, but like if you slide into someone's DM or if you like cheating. A, gir a girl's photo. Cheating. Um, if you respond to a girl in your comments, I never cute. casually dated in my life, yeah. so I really can't. Uh... Uh, okay, let's say you saw your wife at a party you're, that you went to together and she's chatting with a guy who you find who is, is attractive. Is that inappropriate? No, I don't care about that. Yeah. So some Cheating! <laughs> but some people would say, no, you shouldn't be doing that um, even so. So that I would say is very restrictive versus very permissive. Sure. And then the last one is family. Family attachment is like, are you family of origin, meaning more about your nuclear family or more about like family of creation? Like a lot of this is for folks who are not married yet, but like your friends and your new family versus like where you came from. That makes sense. And then if you just look for each other, we can oh, all, right. um, so everyone has a screen name. I added, you, I added Matt Real. Did you take the test? I took it. Yeah, get in here, Matt. We got to see how compatible we are. And we've if actually you and me are more compatible than me and my wife. We've publicly then I get a shared. <laughs> <laughs> we've shared on Jubilee all of our screen names, so a lot of our fans <laughs> like to connect with us. So you're you're welcome mm. to do that or not. Um, but it's a fun thing for folks to do too. Steven, search. are you just Steven Lim? I am. Oh, uh, interesting. Uh, Whoa! Don't, don't publish my um why did it search Oh wait. <laughs> why did it search Steve Kim? That's a different guy. Yeah, wait, I added you. Do you have can you like uh, accept friends. my ad? Oh damn, I'm just seeing some of the I'm saying I'm not gonna ruin it. I just saw some of the results of the people I just added and I and then I just added you guys. Too. So before we get into the results, Jason, can you explain what we're about to see, the okay. percentage, and what it means. Okay, so <clears throat> first off, each of you will get a different love print or the same love print. And love print is represented by the four different letters and a color. So you might be like AWPO, which is like a plum, or you might be a pomegranate or a sunflower. So that color kind of represents like your archetype. Um, and then you'll see your list of friends and you'll see a percentage number numerically from zero to 100, which essentially demonstrates compatibility which is an algorithm that we've built based on the data and the science that we've researched. And a lot of it is around similarity. So a lot of compatibility is based on similarity, of course. Um, so if you have a score that's like above 75 or 80, that's like really high. If you've got a score below 50, I would say that's low. 
Um, <laughs> so I'm excited to see what you guys say. I will say I on some of these questions, I think I didn't interpret them correctly because they were like something about you know building a relationship yes. or something. And I was like, I'm in one. If you're in I'm a not going to be building a relationship with. I would take it again later because, and right now we should disregard your relationship readiness number. Okay. Because that's- I'm gonna, ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready so. for a relationship. And when you take it I'm again, <laughs> think about it in the context of like, I'm ready to invest in my existing relationship. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's the funny thing about us all taking this is all four of us are married. All five of us, including Everyone's me. married? Okay. Very good. This is the most fun with your partner. Oh, I can't. I, I, think. I think it's going to be great. I can't wait to do this with my wife when I get home. Uh, I will say, I haven't looked at the results yet, but- you and I, I have a prediction because I think on the surface, our interests are pretty aligned, like in terms of like what we like and dislike, like media, things like that. But our insights, I feel like are a little different. So Maybe. I actually would not be surprised if our compatibility was low. Who knows? Oh, that's my prediction. Who can say? And then with you, I feel like we might be a little more similar. I, I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. But. Maybe not. I don't know. I saw him and eyes though, and and that what his and eyes make sense to me. Yeah, I assumed that among the four of us, that you and I would, or that you would be the most high for me. Yeah, that's kind of what. But that was my assumption as well. Yeah, uh, so, but I haven't seen them, so we'll see. Okay. I'm, I'm very excited. Are you ready for the reveal here? Let's do it. Wait, wait. Do you want to have any predictions, Stephen and Shane? I think that me and Ryan are probably the most similar of the three of us, just based on. What we've learned on this podcast. <laughs> sure. In uh, life. And starting this company together. But I don't know, actually. Out of all of us, I'm curious who has the highest number out of anything, person to person. Oh. oh that, yeah. That would be interesting. If you've got anything in the 90s, that's like- Damn. Very, very rare. I would say very rare. Wow. Oh, that'd shit. be crazy. You gotta so, wipe that up. Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, how, how do we want to start this? Should I get- how, Let's what, start with like, I'm a plum. Oppo, A W P O. Uh, it means that I am somebody who is a bit of an or overshare. That's accurate. And uh, you're a wee person. Wee person. I am a, a repo, R I P O, agave. Boundaries are permissive, and family attachment is origin family. That's I could right. see that. You, yeah, yeah you're very permissive. You don't, you don't make friends <laughs> <laughs> at all. I, I try to just. Just keep with my core. I've had the same group of like eight or so friends since elementary school <laughs> and I see them every weekend. So it makes sense. I feel like you pull your new friends into your, I do. your family almost. I like do. They know your parents and like, yeah, my parents are often at our your parties brother. and functions yeah, and stuff like exactly. that. Yeah. Do, do we want, do you want me to read the, what the repo is? Sure. Cause Steven, did you read what yours I, I kind of gave the, uh, I gave the top but, line, but you can, yeah, you can read yours. I kind of want to hear what yours is though. I see love as bringing together two separate worlds. It's about self-growth and through partnership, uh, total transparency from the beginning and nurture as you go along. I believe that's what allows me and my partner to embrace each other's flaws, fears, and aspirations, which is true. Been that, very, that's been how you've led this company, I feel. That is how I lead this company. That is true. Yeah. Feels like, Maybe yeah. for better or for worse, that's how I lead this company. <laughs> yeah. That mine is interesting. It says, you value personal introspection and physical intimacy okay. over discussion. Okay. dog over here. <laughs> Charles <No>. Melton. <laughs> even, even, though, even though you're more than willing to... <laughs> a little onomatopoeia there. Uh, even though you're more than willing to express yourself after some reflection. You want to keep parts of your life separate as a partner. You will, uh, As a partner will never replace the community you've built. But you also love sharing everything about yourself in tandem with getting swept away in the physical acts of love. I don't know. I, I would actually, I think I prefer the discussion, honestly, more so. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty accurate, I would say. My, um, mine says I'm an A-W-E-O pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Boundaries permissive. Family attachment created family. Mm. Yes. This this insight is really funny too. It says you're a bit of an oversharer. <laughs> is sharing always caring? Use self awareness <laughs> to consider what might be TMI. Uh, they these pe uh, you must be watching a lot of Pod Watcher. <laughs> 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 I want to see these percentages. Yeah, why don't you? All right, sorry, Stephen. Reveal yours and Shane's. Me and Shane. Are we sing them at the same time. 
44 <laughs> percent wow <laughs> that checks out yeah, yeah. That checks out. i think that so. checks i actually think his and i's will be very similar All right. and uh that's lower than me and my wife which is whew, good sign there <laughs> what is uh what is yours and i's oh wait, let me look All right, ready me and you it is 65 percent oh wow. that actually that scans a little higher and then uh shane and i 63 percent oh whoa. i think that scans that actually scans too because in a lot of ways i am the bridge between the two you of are you. the bridge yeah, yeah uh, I see that. and then jason and i is 80 percent so really? we should take these rings off and just watch out mario <laughs> just go to work. <laughs> <laughs> matt and i have a 77 uh, no way uh, wait good. a second that made a lot of sense to i me. think so yeah because we we are we've been friendly for a long time wait, you and me I, and matt are 26 <laughs> percent <laughs> That's the lowest number I've ever seen on this on this app. So so this episode wow. has to end with a fist fight. Twenty yeah. <laughs> seven uh, legally. Uh, yeah. So what does that mean? Twenty seven twenty six percent for uh So there will be interesting as friends that you may interact socially in different ways or react in a relationship in different ways. So like you two at a party, I'd be really curious to see how you would navigate a party. Mm. Let's mm. let's let's run this scene. Okay, <laughs> it's a party. Well, we have we've seen it because I didn't. I don't really know Stephen that well. I don't know him better now after working yeah, here yeah. for a bit. But at your wedding, it was like we would kind of circle and then say, "Oh yeah, you know, we're even friendly." <laughs> yeah, oh, keep it friendly, you know. <laughs> hey, well, we've been friendly. You still have the mustache. Yeah, stuff like that. Stuff yeah. like that. Well, like Matt, do you identify as the guarded versus the open vulnerability? I think I'm pretty open about things but i do not to everyone i guess what we find is often it's about the speed at which you're willing to open so there are yeah. some people you're at a date and it's like every single thing comes out so that's <laughs> like extreme yeah that's open me. and some mm, people you don't get well. anything and you're like okay this is pretty guarded so everyone's usually a spectrum but it's about speed and willingness to do that and neither is good or bad because sometimes there's a perception oh you want to be open or and that's not necessarily true because we've all been on dates where you get like the trauma you're dump like, shut up yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like oh this is too much shut and then the there's sometimes you're like i don't know, you know I, I, i've I, never been on a date i think it might be <laughs> i think it'd be bad for me because i do tend to overshare but i also have debilitating anxiety so i'll overshare and uh, then think about oversharing for the later. rest of the week yeah. oh yeah same uh, yeah. that's or, or you'll start drinking beer like a dog <laughs> <laughs> Because I did think that was funny. Uh, the date wasn't going anywhere, so I was like, it's time to drink this beer like a dog. <laughs> check this out. Hey, check it out what I can do. Uh, uh, anyways, uh, Matt, you and I are a, a 59. Oh. That makes so much sense. It does, Because actually. we like have for years been like oh yeah we should hang out but nev it's never happened it's never happened <laughs> only at like events like or like uh or and we like, get along great yeah in all of those scenarios like when we were at the bachelor party i was like we gotta hang out more this is great yeah uh and then uh, yeah, it just never happens but <laughs> but like so real quick the percentage is that's not a representation of like how well you get along it's not a, it's not a, like how personality it's it's more about like your if I'm if I'm reading, it's like your perception of how you view relationships. You probably have a similar approach and philosophy and yes, way of acting. I would say it's that. It's a little bit of both because how you view relationships, not just romantic, but relationships in general, end up dictating how you show up sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but also like actions versus perception can be different as well. So there's so many different factors, which is like, this is by no means supposed to dictate successful relationship or not successful relationship. What we find is like, oh, huh, Ryan and Matt, you guys are similar in this way and different in this way. Oh, but you guys want to get closer together. These might be the spaces that like you would be more similar or think about the world similarly yeah. and different. And what we find is like every season you take it, your results will actually change. Oh, shit. So we actually kind of like recommend taking it. Let's every get those scores months. up, man. Yeah. It does. It, I mean, it's, it's very funny to me because it does make sense. It's exactly what I would expect it. Yeah. For the, our, at least our numbers. But that's what I was saying. My prediction was all of our likes in terms of like media and food and all that stuff is pretty similar. It's all been pretty similar, but like the insides and how we view the world is a little different, which is maybe that's the secret sauce to Ghost Files or any of the shows that we do yeah maybe well thank you guys for taking it 
This is very cool, Jason. This is great. This is going to be adding more assessments. Uh, Soon you'll be able to add photos. So you can put up your little dog photo if you want. I'm going to go home and take this with my dog. You have a little profile pic. (laughs) Vinny's going to say. I'll put like three balls in front of him and whichever one he picks, that's the answer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Was the inspiration for Vinny, was that Vin Scully or what what was the inspiration for the name? Just, it's a funny name. Uh Uh-oh. Jersey Shore? Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's just a, Mari thought it'd be funny if we called our dog Vinny. Cause she goes, Vinny. <laughs> he's like a, a, a mafioso. So uh, he's the cutest little little guy. Uh, but anyways, they, uh, thank you again for coming on, Jason. Uh, I think that wraps up this episode. But before we go, you have anything else you want to plug here? While well, you have the the mic, please download our app, but also like and subscribe at Jubilee as well. It's good We'd stuff. love to have you as more on our channel as well. That would be great. You guys, you guys put some people in the hot seat over there. We do, Ask yeah. Them some tough questions. Yeah, don't worry. The we TQs. won't put you in a position that you guys are not prepared for. Can we do an episode of Pod Watcher in one of the uh, the spaces? Oh, that would be fun. That'd be cool. Yeah, that would be that cool. would be really, really kind of hardcore. <laughs> some really hardcore stuff <laughs> that actually would be terrifying yeah right so because like one show they have and we're, we got to get out of here but uh, middle ground yeah i would that would be the most terrifying show for me to be on because i tend to get pretty heated in arguments uh, and uh, nuance sometimes escapes me honestly one episode that would be amazing for you guys one day is we want to do um supernatural like believers and skeptics oh, oh shit and that you guys good. would be perfect we I mean, had the I'll tell you what, a lot debate. of skeptics are pretty insufferable. But a lot of so believers. So believers. believers. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the sauce there. Is but that's the magic between you guys as well. And you guys are such good representatives of those two sides. I while feel like being both of us would just be like, calm down. <laughs> 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 we would stop. <laughs> We would turn on both of our groups <laughs> yeah, that's and the then point just of the start show, teaming though. up against them. That's the point of yeah, the show. Find true. middle ground. Yeah. Uh, but thank you, <laughs> thank you for having me, though. Yeah, you guys. thanks for being here. This was great. <laughs> yeah. That's Pod Watcher. Like and subscribe our podcast as well if you haven't. That's oh, important. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. important. Talk to your friends and family about that. Yeah, as always, make sure you give us that uh, subscription on YouTube over on Watcher Podcasts, uh, youtube.com slash Watcher Podcasts. And, you know, subscribe wherever you listen to this as well as hopefully rating us five stars. It does help us keep making the podcast uh, and we do appreciate the support. But until then, until next time, rather, uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Yeah, bye.